Welcome to a B-Roll Brothers podcast. This is ABC DVD, Two Brothers' alphabetic journey through a DVD collection that's misunderstood, but will bring the family together in the end. Mm. I'm Noah. And I'm Josh. And today we're talking about Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck. His name is Buck, and he's here to... No, Billing no, for an emergency <laughs> because you know family comes first. It does. Um, when you when you have no other option, call a brother. Call a brother. <laughs> so yeah, we're talking about uh, Uncle Buck, a 1989, August 16th. Uh, it was written and directed by John Hughes, and I'm going to go through an extensive list because historically, John Hughes is very important to the 80s yeah, he film is, scene. I would call, he is Gen Xer's uh, director of the generation, I yeah. would think. For yeah. better or worse, he did good things, he did bad things, he does a lot of stereotypes, Yeah, I but mean, he is prolific. Yes, he is. So, I, my feeling on him is, if it involves teens, he does a good job. If it's other stuff, I have problems with it. Mm -hmm. So he is known for Ferris Bueller's Day Off, yep. Weird Science, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Home Alone, Breakfast Club, Sixteen Candles, and all the National Lampoon vacations. And yes, he did do uh, writing for Home Alone. Okay, writing, because I thought that was a Chris Columbus one. It is, but he is a writer. Okay, so. I'll accept. I thought we were doing director, sorry. Well, written and directed, written so I'm going to expand the list. Fair enough. Yeah, that's fair. That's and fair. there is a ton of others, but... These are, you know, just the the big. Yeah, those are the big touchstones. Uh, starring John Candy. Yep. Uh, beloved 1980s comedian. Yep. He yep. was in Spaceballs, Blue Brother, Blues Brothers, mm -hmm. and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Mm -hmm. Macaulay Culkin. What's he known for? I know. Uh, Home, Alone. Home Alone, My Girl, and the Very Bizarre, The Good Son. Uh. <laughs> when you need a choice between you know Elijah. Kevin McAllister or you know. Frodo Baggins. Yes. Choose Frodo. Choose Frodo. <laughs> uh, and Jean Louise Kelly, who was in Mr. Holland's Opus, mm -hmm. and most recently Top Gun Maverick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a gross of $79.2 That's not bad for a you know, no, family for, comedy. No, for a family comedy. In the 80s, that's, you know, that's good. So, the, synop the synopsis. The synopsis. When Cindy Elaine Bromock and her husband Bob, Garrett Brown, have to leave town for a family emergency. There's only one person available to babysit for their kids. Bob's lazy, carefree brother, Buck, John Candy. While he immediately gets along with two younger children, Gabby Hoffman and Macaulay Culkin, Buck must change his bachelor lifestyle if he wants to be a responsible caregiver for the angst-filled teenager, Tia, Jean Louisa Kelly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know... The there's not a lot to the story. It's just family needs someone to watch their kids while they're away, and they they come, and then there's, like, random scenes. Yeah, this is a lot like if you listen to our Babe review. Yeah. There's a lot of scenes stitched together into a passable story, story yeah. question mark? And very much like, Babe, I'm worried about my feelings because I feel like people are going to yell at me. Well, and yes, as like, we don't have the nostalgia, the for, nostalgia this for this movie, so a lot of this is going to become from a, not a first viewing, no, but it's like, but it's, like, it's I, been a long time. I remember since I watching this. as a kid and not really being interested, yeah. and then watching it as an adult and still not being, still interested, not in being yeah. interested. So, Grains of salt, yes. if you love it, that's awesome. We're going to be coming from a different point of view. Yeah. Um, I, I have to laugh at the intro. R reminds me so much of late 80s, early 90s, of person walking through the fall woods. Mm -hmm. You have a, a little jingle in the background. Yeah. Everyone kind of comes home at the same time. And, yeah. you know, Uncle Buck, you know, title screen. Yeah, and, and it's like that same neighborhood and same jingle you wouldn't expect mike myers night to pop out in the background i was like oh this is now a horror film oh yeah <laughs> but no it, it is the quintessential 80s you know suburbia you know neighborhood well and and these are stereotypical characters you have yeah. a broody teen sister you yeah. have a precocious uh son who knows way too, too much words, words yeah. and you have the whiny little sister who's just adorable as a button uh, yes <laughs> and so these are going to be our you know titular characters mm -hmm. you know that are going to be taken care of by the slovenly uncle buck and i i kind of going to jump ahead here of this like oh he he's a slob he's he, he's 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 uncouth and it's like wow he dresses really well for someone who's not supposed to be put together, it's like, oh, he's got sweaters and cardigans <laughs> and a really nice overcoat. What I was like, it's like, it's like is he raiding his brother's uh, but, closet? But clearly not, not because the, the, different the body, body shapes, shapes yeah. are not working. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're setting up a 
dysfunctional family in the most yeah. 80s sense of you have a team that's talking back you have parents yeah. who are disconnected and yeah. i i feel like john hughes is making a statement of like you know the working class versus the suburbanite republican yeah. family and mm -hmm. you know oh god we're not getting along 100 percent time we're dysfunctional it's like uh, well you know there's just yeah you're, the, you're, you're not relating to your teen and no one does and no one does so this is this is not as dire as you make it out to be but the the snark level is oh, extremely it's high. high i mean she is the ex, it's, i called it exposition complaining it's like how dare you move us away from our home to come here and it's like wow you are just telling us everything that everyone should no. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, and then we flash over to Buck, yeah. you know, with his, you know, working class girlfriend. Yeah. They're in a bar. They, you know, they're having their own struggles of like, you know, Buck, you just don't want to oh, commit. Hey, yeah. You don't want to commit to work. You don't want to <laughs> commit to me. You need to pull your life together, Buck. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, you know, it's 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 John Candy. He's yeah. you know he's adorable and he's, he's charming as all get out. He's all you know. Yeah, and you know his girlfriend played by Amy Madigan, who I know from um, Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Like she's like, yeah, no, you can see that they work together. They did, but, but that she needs more. Yeah. But then we get the the turn of uh, you know the mm -hmm. the you know the grandfather has a heart attack. Yeah. Oh my gosh, who's gonna? You know, watch the kids, and this is where I'm going to have to snap my suspenders of oh, disbelief God. because we both said it at the same time. I was like, "Why can't the dad watch? Yeah, why, why well, can't well, she go? If, why can't she go check on her dad and he stay home with the kids?" I mean, and I know that that then the movie doesn't. The have, movie doesn't have, but but if, even in like '80s, like we need to have you yeah. know a thing. It's like, yes, I'm willing to accept. Oh my gosh, Macaulay Culkin got left at home oh, because yes. they set up this thing. It's like they thought they counted him, or yeah, yeah whatever. But this, this one doesn't work. It's like whoa, 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 it's whoa, like, whoa. Yeah, I can see. Oh, honey, I need you there for support. It's like great. Let's ask the neighbors. Oh, they're busy. Okay, let's ask you know this babysitter. Oh, they're busy. Okay, we got no one. I have to stay with the kids. You gotta go take care of your dad. Yeah, or that's why the, that's can't we bring the kids? No, they need to stay in school. school. Like, do they? Do they? Do they? It's yeah. the eight. But so that. If I have a, a big complaint of like you know yeah. like I, I understand like the movie can't happen unless I was like well, make a better excuse yeah you know it's like oh. some reason why they both have to be gone yeah but. so they they call Buck he wakes up yeah. you know in the he, middle of the night middle yeah. of the night he says yeah sure I'll do this you yeah. know why you not know, why not and then you get a kind of a uh, in the morning he has to call his girlfriend and say like no I, I promised yeah. I'd come in but and, this, and you get a kind of a Abbott and Casella a yeah but like oh yeah. wait get no. out and yeah it's like no it's like there are going to it's like this is going to be the theme of our yeah. talk of like there are gag scenes like yes. oh this is this scene yeah that then leads to this, this scene. scene yeah but does it progress the story well, yeah you know very much like buck went to the wrong house now in this case it works with the story that he doesn't know where his brother lives yeah because there there is a sad story underneath this of yeah. like he is ostracized from his brother yeah. whether it's because his, his bro brother's become successful and his wife thinks he's obnoxious and they yeah. just don't connect it does seem like that his that the sister-in-law the mom does not want buck in their life yes and and this is my main complaint i'll come to the end of it of the that doesn't really go anywhere no but you know they they set it up yeah he gets blank checks which never come back i was like yeah. i was kind of hoping that the blank checks. there's a lot of things like, that are established that don't come back and yeah. that's they make a big deal about blank checks that never, never pay off like yeah. you think tia uh who has been pushing everyone's buttons as the angsty teen might have taken one of them and you know got yeah. buck in trouble that way but yeah but no it, no, it just doesn't do anything um but yeah, and you know he breaks a plate, which never comes Come back. back. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a, it, there's these gags that get set up that never. Yeah, you get, get all close. these small talks and uncomfortable family moments. Just say, "Oh, isn't this funny?" And it's like, is it? Is it? I is mean, that, it can be. I guess we've all had, you know, that family member at a family gathering that we don't really want to talk to, but we have to go through like the the. The, small, the niceties. Yeah, the small talk, though. So, yeah. yeah. All right. But yeah, he gets a cold reception in the morning yep. from the angsty teen. Yeah, Tia is, is quiet. It's like. Yeah, and I, I said, you know, something that I did laugh at was yeah. when Macaulay Culkin's interrogating him. Yeah. That one <laughs> did make me laugh. And this was a, a thing that they really apparently wanted to have that quick question and answer, mm -hmm. deadpan style. And John Candy, to make Macaulay Culkin's life easier on that, actually glued uh, cue cards of the script so Macaulay Culkin could read faster when it was like, on his close-up mm. so that it could be quick and natural that way they could cut around it and that 
this child, because McCulloch was very young at this, mm -hmm. didn't have to memorize 30 lines in a go, but just had to read. And I was like, that, that was a touching moment to know that John Candy took care of his child actor co-star. Yeah, moment. because it's like, I, yeah. do, I mean, I'm sure even he's like, I don't want to memorize 30 lines, lines either it, to yeah. have, you know, rapid fire succession. Yep. yep. Uh, we go to the, the drop off. To the drop off of the school. And the one of many jokes of his car sounds like a gunshot, which was hilarious in the 80s. And well, nowadays, <laughs> maybe not as funny. Not so much gunshots at schools yeah but no i mean you get the it's it's embarrassing yeah. and yeah. i mean i i do have to like i do like uh john candy's approach to i don't like this guy i'm going to be as obnoxious as possible mm. i also like how he deals with tia of yeah. th these are the only times i laugh oh, no. it's like it's like you you can't tell me what to do it's like if you don't listen to what i say I'm going to come back in my PJs mm -hmm. and I'm going to walk you to your class. Now, what do you think is going to happen? It's like, oh, these these threats that he gives her are hilarious. They're hilarious. And I think they're absolutely appropriate. Yes, yeah. Because she is throwing oh, a yeah. lot of shade at him. And he's like, and he doesn't take it, like yeah. which his parents probably just yeah. roll over. It was like, if you don't do X, mm -hmm. then Y will happen. Yes. What do you, you know, and yeah. he gives her the choice. Yeah. You can do this. This is how I respond. So what do you want? Yeah. And I think that's, no, and, that's, as that's a father, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm okay with this. Yeah. Uh, we get a random scene of, he packed a terrible lunch for Macaulay Culkin. And <laughs> yep. it's like, hey, do you want to switch lunches? And everyone jumps away at scene over. Scene over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we, uh, we come back to he's, uh, you know, he's back at the house kind of yeah. not knowing to do it. Yeah. And it comes across the photo album. And it's like, and it is sad that he realizes that he's been folded out. He's yeah. been literally cut out of the photo. Yeah. But nothing's more made out of this. Yeah. Like he just kind of like rolls with like, oh, oh, I guess they don't like me. Well, it's that thing of you keep seeing like he wants to make a good impression to show that not only to his girlfriend that he can be a family man, mm -hmm. but also to his brother and his sister-in-law that it's like, no, he's not the screw up that they think he is. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we get back to, you know, he picks her up at school and we yeah. meet Bug, the, yeah, the boyfriend, boyfriend, which... Is very much a stereotypical 80s, like, well, we can't trust this guy. Yeah. I mean, because if Bug was actually a, her genuine boyfriend that you know was just a normal high school boyfriend, what Buck does to him through the movie is unconscionable. But since it is an 80s movie and we know Bug is a bad, bad guy. person, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. And then we go to the new scene. It's like it's it's bedtime. Yeah, and it's like, and I I appreciate this scene. Mm. I mean, it, it, only coming from a father's yeah. point of view. It's like. No, no, no. This is what happens when children come into yeah. your bed. You don't get any of it. They somehow expand beyond their, you know, physical limitations and take up the whole bed. Yeah, they play pretend they're skydivers. I'm amazed at how quickly that, I guess it's because Uncle Buck is so charming that she wants to share a bed with this stranger. But you know what? I mean, it, she's, it, she's, she, she's a, she's cute as a button. She's going to, she's going to do what she can. Yeah. At the same time, you know, Tia tries to get Buck in trouble with mom by, yeah, you know, lying. lying. And the mom doesn't buy it. Or she does, and but she it, just says, like, Buck, I'm terrified. And he's like, okay, bye-bye. Yeah, so I'm terrified. You know, knowing you're watching my kids it just terrifies me. It's like, that's a nice thing to say for someone who's actually doing you a favor. A and, big favor. And I know it's like, you. he's your last choice, but he's still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, the, the bed gag we do, I do appreciate, because when I watched your kid, she also did that to me. Mm -hmm. But it, I felt... That this gag went on too long. It is a lot. I mean, I guess it's to have a musical interlude. interlude but it's like, okay, yeah, he, he's been pushed off. Oh, he's been pushed off the bed. Okay, this montage is going a little too far. It but. is. And I feel like they they use the same scene three times, yeah. like clipped together. It's like, he, you know, he's yeah tossing and turning. And then we get the random neighbor visit. Mercy. Which is funny because yeah. there is a sexual misunderstanding but the scene is just weird. It's just weird. I mean, it's like, yes, Buck like, does not know how to use the washer or dryer, and he's just pounding away at it. And from the outside, it sounds like he's going to town having sex. But yeah, but it's also it's like a lot of these scenes start to because like, why is she wandering into a yeah. house? I mean, which is not unheard of, but it's like, it's like, it's like, why? So we can have this scene. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but then we, you know, we were going to go. Go bowling and it's yeah. like, but I don't want to go. It's like, but maybe I'll shave your head and while you're sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's. It's like it's mean, but it gets her to move. Yeah, and then it's like, and it, and, it, and this is the first time I realized that uh, Buck does not live far away from them. No, because because like, you kind of make it seem like oh, we're, but it's like no, no, they're on the outskirts of Chicago. Chicago and he, he's in Chicago. Chicago, and that's all the difference. I went, oh, that makes their you know relationship sad that more sad that he's not been visiting more often because it's it's like. 
it's a 30 minute drive mm-hmm. you know, at that at that so but, but yeah the the, bo- the bowling scene is just set up that he is protective yes you know and it sets up this very small MacGuffin of he's gonna go make a bet at some point yeah. this is his bread and butter yeah. and he's got an end to kind of cheat at it but this is how he makes his money for a whole year is you know getting the hot tips yeah you know? And then we get the, probably the most famous scene of the movie is the giant pancake. Yeah, because the mom offhandedly said there were all these things that might happen, but they should be home in time. And one of them was Macaulay Culkin's mm-hmm. birthday. Which is just, I mean, I, I'm big on birthdays. Yes. But it's like, oh, it's his birthday. Pa. Yeah. It's like, I mean, brownie points to Buck for remembering yeah. the offhanded remark of what day he, it was. It's, he's going to have a birthday. And tries to make it special. And this is a thing I do appreciate about this movie, and it, we kind of skipped over the first breakfast, is Buck's, you know, this bachelor, and usually they're like, oh, they only get Chinese takeout. No, Buck knows actually know how to cook. And he knows how to be inventive. It's just he doesn't know how to cook for kids. Yeah. But he figures out, it's like, I can make giant pancakes. I mean, it's not because <laughs> he doesn't know how to make giant pancakes. He's like, no, he's doing this for fun and spectacle. I mean, I, I have to say, it's like, it's not so much the impressiveness of a giant pancake. It's they have a giant enough so griddle simple, yeah. to make the pancake. He got some he got some scrap metal, put it on all the... He, he figured out, you know, use a snow shovel. But yeah, but then we to, just get the random birthday scene yeah. where he gets to punch a clown. Yeah. Which I'm always appreciative yeah. of punching a clown. Yeah, and, you know... But yeah, the, that, the, the, that's just the scene. It's that's like, the scene. Oh. It's a, it's, you, you punch a drunken clown because yeah. he's acting like a jerk. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, that, that clown was Mike Starr, you know, character actor that you might know from many things. But, yep, just a clown. <laughs> you know, he was in Dumb and Dumber. Oh, okay, like that, Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and then... Then we go to... Literally, it transitions really quickly to make out point. Yeah. It's like, it's nighttime. And it's like, well, she's snuck out. She's, yeah. She's, she's at make out point. Buck knows where make out point is. is apparently. Because, so. yeah, like, oh, she said she was, you know, at, studying at a party. And, you know, apparently Buck saw through that. But we don't see the setup or the pay. We, we just get payoffs. I mean, it, it is for things lot, that are established. I mean, yeah, you, you're setting up. This is a pushy yeah. boyfriend. We know what he's pushing for. Yeah. Buck comes. And it's like, you do get a fun scene. It's like about the hatchet, which goes yes. on. Really Wait. uncomfortably long of, a, of how he's going to basically chop him to bitty pieces. Yeah, and so just, just for the payoff of here it is, I found it. Show mm-hmm. it off, yeah. And that was like one of the few scenes and the pancake scene from when I watched it as a kid that I remember. It's yeah. like, oh, okay. Apparently that stuck with me. Uh, we get a very <laughs> random scene yeah. of going to the elementary school of saying. Yeah, you know, my my sister in law set this meeting up, so I'll obviously yeah. take it. And this is. My problem with not establishing anything of we get the the vice principal saying, "Oh, your you know, your niece, the youngest one, is a dreamer and you know a, a, bad, a pro- egg. Bad, bad egg, and I, I I don't like her." It's like we saw none of this. We saw not her. She's never in a school scene. No, it is literally this is the, a, a stereotypical. Oh, I'm a I'm a bad principal. Yeah, and yeah. I don't like yeah. children. Yeah. And, and it's a kind of, I feel like, a wish fulfillment of someone told off the principal. Yeah. And again, in the 80s, that might be a, a dream now. Today, it's like, it's kind of a problem. But Yeah. Well, well I mean, like, I mean the, it's the fact that he can just wander into I mean, a school. A school alone, yeah. That, that maybe was like, yeah, you're not allowed to do that anymore. There's no security checks or anything. But it's that he tells her off and another kid overhears it and he's having a good time. And then he leaves and the scene's over. And that was just because they wanted... That scene, and yeah. they also wanted the the hilariousness of a tall man at a small urinal. I've had that issue, but <laughs> you find you, you made a meal out of that one too. Yeah, now gravity's your friend. Yes, um, a few random scenes. He's microwaving clothes because yeah. he still doesn't know how to wash. Yeah, uh, Marcy comes back over. We have a whole dance scene, and know. this is and this is the whole point of the Marcy character to have the quintessential rom com. But this isn't rom com, but. Uh, the misunderstanding of if you just talk to each other, this would be solved. But his girlfriend shows up. Well, and, and this this is another suspenders of disbelief. Yeah. Is how did the girlfriend know where he was? Oh yeah. I mean, maybe he left her a note, but it's like, but there's this kind of thing like they've been kind of on the outs because she's mad at him yeah. for leaving. How does she know? How where? does she know where she is? I mean, he didn't even know where the right the house was. was. How would she know? Yeah. I know everyone's going. I, I, if you love this movie, you're like it's a comedy. Don't like. I was like, I understand. Mm-hmm. It's these little things that kind of add up after all. Like, listen, it, it becomes an SNL sketch show where it's like there are just scenes that you love. Yeah. But the movie overall doesn't, doesn't work. Really work. Yeah. And it's like we just need them to be in, in Act Two of his relationship on the outs. Tia has run away. You know. Yeah, and that's where the movie yeah. turns. Yeah. Is, and it's not even a big turn. He's like, oh, he wants to go put this bed in, but yeah. 
the the music starts up and he grows up, yeah. you know, at that moment yeah. and goes to find Tia at the house party. Well, because he he says like to Macaulay Culkin and, and to the two other kids of saying. She's old enough to know better. Well, I'm going to take you to the track. And then he looks at himself as like, I, I should know should be, I'm old enough to know better I mean, not to take you to the track. It's a very nice scene. Yeah. But unfortunately, like, because we're we're not following along this evolution, it yeah. doesn't pay off in spades. No. But he, he calls in a favor, yeah. you know, and goes to the house party. Yeah. And, you know, it, it takes is, forever to get through it. it. I mean, that is, I mean. Good house party, though. It's a giant house party where it is wall-to-wall teens. Yes. You know, all looking at each other like, what are we supposed to be doing? And this has been a thing that we kind of skipped over, but people hate his hat. Mm. And it is a uh, winter toque, as I know it from my Canadian friends. Yeah. And it's like, why would they hate his hat? I mean, it's the 80s where hats a problem. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. But, yeah. you know, I, I do appreciate the mm -hmm. misdirection. Yeah, that you think Tia's about to be, you know, she say, the she's girls say, no, say no, 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 I'm not ready. And he's, Bug keeps he's, pushing. And he bursts the door down. Yeah, with a drill that he had in his coat. Cause because I don't think, he brought a drill. Because he's, he's not going to walk through that party again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just had a drill well, in his uh, yeah. But, you know. It's not Tia. It's not Tia. It's some random girl who's who also, also saying no, no. no. It's, but we're going to gloss over that. We have a heart-to-heart -heart moment with Buck and Tia. Yeah. And it's like, I come back to, what this movie does right is how to, in an yeah. 80s, yeah. very easy way, talk to a teen. It's like, he's genuine. Yeah. And she finally realized, like, listen, you you haven't been BSing me. Yeah. I've been giving you a hard time. Maybe I can cut you some slack because you are being genuine. And I love that moment of... You know, you were right, and he's just saying, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to get you home. Yeah. It's that I'm not angry. I'm scared. For, I was scared of what happened to you. And again, we then get this nice moment of the revenge because Bug's in the trunk. And I go, <laughs> he carried Bug through that party. <laughs> and no one saw. <laughs> and no one saw or I said mean, a thing. crazy man with a drill <laughs> carry <laughs> a hot tied duct Bug. Duct tape Bug. I, you know. You know, there's I, I, a good I, chance that the girl he saved said, this guy's a sh you know, get him out, so I'll give it, but I'm just going trying to think of, you know, bug over Buck's shoulder, yeah. you know, duct taped and thrown into the truck. The whole party's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's no, that kind of party. It's bug. This, is know, not, this happens like, like every Tuesday. But, but kidnapping the 80s, okay. And then a very random, let's you, chuck golf, golf ball. balls at him. Yeah, it's like, oh, because it's been established, he's a great golfer. Yeah, no, it, it hasn't. hasn't. But it's like, yeah, you've already intimidated You've already put it in the trunk. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, run away. Okay, we got to do this intimidation thing again, I guess. Yeah, well, we'll We're, chuck golf balls we'll, we'll, we'll have an, another scene on the scene. You know? And then it's all wrapped up with the parents coming yeah. home. And all the relationships have been, yeah. you know solved and we can have a touchy moment of yeah but the problem is so yeah tia and her mom have a resolution because they're they were pushing their buttons at the beginning and they tia now hugs her mom and that's a heartwarming moment but that's not the main conflicting relationship in this movie the main conflict relationship in this movie is between buck and his sister-in-law and there is no resolution there's no there's no, walk, there's no thank like you there's no thank you there's no like home alone moment of oh this place is gonna be a mess and there's actually quite clean and there's you know dinner on the table there's no thank you so much and the kids say no this is great and we'd love to have you back and it's like you kind of get that out the door of oh we'll see you, but there's no yeah there's no, there's no genuine like oh, there's no genuine we're going to have better, better relationships, relationships going forward yeah and then you get the titular yeah. '80s freeze frame yeah. like that's your buck yeah I mean it's almost identical to the freeze frame of planes trains and automobile on John Candy mm -hmm. and it, I, I, it's just and I don't know if these are scenes that they wanted to throw in planes trains or <laughs> vice versa yeah. it's like <sighs> yeah I mean. If you love this movie, I mean, I know it yeah. is well regarded in like the eighties. Yeah. It's like it's, it's it is John Candy doing John Candy. Yeah, it's like it is just a very apparent thing of like there's not a movie here. They just had scenes they wanted to yeah. throw up, which yeah, in regards to late eighties or early nineties does work because if you really think about it, Ferris Home Wheels. Alone, Ferris Wheels, these are all just like well, they're fun scenes, and the 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 greater story is really. Uh, yeah. But in the case of Ferris Bueller and Home Alone, those scenes are related to their story of the day of Ferris Bueller saying, oh, they want to have lunch, so they con their way into lunch, or they just want to go... Yeah. Oh, the, yes, the, the random one is like, there's a parade today. But yeah. But for this one, it's like, okay, there's just we're just going to have this lunch scene that comes out of nowhere, or this argument that comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. 
And it's just a product. Of it's, it's a product time. time. And I, I remember like there's an episode of Scrubs that say, oh, if we need to make someone laugh, let's watch this one. I went, this is the worst movie to make me laugh because mm -hmm. I only kind of laughed when he threatened Tia yeah. with the, his punishment. No, and I think that's coming from a sadistic you yeah. know, parent point of view. Yeah. And, but yeah, overall, it's like, yeah. I mean, I guess watch it to see what the yeah, but if the you like it or not. But overall, I was like, eh, I can yeah. Pass but if you're a you know, boomer Gen X who have nostalgia over this, sure. I, I don't see why not. I mean, my, my jaded millennial oh, yeah, is yeah. Just be like, oh, uh, 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 this does not meet my avocado toast needs. Yes, it's it's so slow and does not keep my ADHD brain going. But mm. you know. Just not for me. Uh, the reason we have it is it's an inherited you know DVD from the collections, and you know what. I'm not upset that I watched it. It's no. just not one, obviously not one I'm of, going to rewatch. Of the John Hughes pantheon, it does not rank high. No, uh, like I said, the ones that I like are the ones that involve the teens. I mean, mainly it's Ferris Bueller's Breakfast Club and Weird Science for me. Mm -hmm. Home Alone, I give more to Chris Columbus, but yeah. Well, and Breakfast Club definitely you know hits on bigger social issues. Yes, and you know social issues, you know breed dissent, mm -hmm. and dissent is of the people because our yeah, next movie yeah. is V for Vendetta. Yeah, okay. Remember, remember. I was gonna, I was hoping you were, I was like, do you remember what our next movie is? But okay, Descent, Descent. No, no, stood. no, no. The, the government shouldn't, you yeah, know. We shouldn't fear the government. The government should fear us. people. Yeah. And There's, the teens. The teens who have grown up yes. and become angry adults yes. like me. Yes. <laughs> so next time if, for our, I guess, would be our Halloween episode. Yes. And it's appropriate because we're, you know, they're wearing masks. And it's close to the 5th of November anyway. So, it's true. You know. So it's going to be V for Vendetta. I adore this movie. Yes. I have read the comic, so we can do a little bit of both. Low A and B, and yeah. So, if you watched Uncle Buck, Buck, great. Sure. If not, you know, enjoy our little rant of me. Yeah, bring your pitchforks if you think we ruined another classic. And uh, join us for V for Vendetta next time. All right. Bye. Bye. I don't know if we have a blooper though. I don't know what we did at the beginning. You talked about someone's face, but I don't know if you can use that. <laughs> Look at that face. That but face is I photoshopped that face under that body. I wanna take my face and put it on that face. <laughs> it's a face off thing. It's a face off joke. <laughs>